Greetings folks, Flying Docs here once again, hope you're doing all right. Uh, welcome, this is a tutorial, the displays that are possible on displays as you can see here, but I'm going to look at something called the digital map display and also the navigation. There's an additional screen uh, which shows the vehicle matching sort of temperatures and all kinds of stuff. We're not going to look at that right now, uh, but I will show it. So when you start out the sim, on each of the, the screens to the left, you have options of what you want to display by clicking these little uh, arrows here, and you can see what's displayed underneath. And uh, so you have an option of putting a screen you want on the left and a screen you want in the center. I tend to click on something called VMS, Vehicle Management uh, System. Uh, it's the one that I probably should pay more attention to, but I don't. <laughs> and I haven't yet sort of decoded all of that, but I tend to put that to the left because it allows me to put the primary flight display, which is naturally on the right here. Um, as you can see, there's no other options along here, uh, but the middle one gives you a choice. There are two options. Um, well, there's three actually. You can repeat the flight lane, which is there. Uh, click F, the digital map display. Uh, you'll find your route will be displayed and you've got options to show maps underneath it. So we're going to look at that first. For those of you familiar with flight plans, there's a flight plan laid in here that the hell went called Umber. And then we're moving from there to CD2, uh, the, uh, uh, you can see EGL City Airport. And we are midway between Umber and CD21, which is a waypoint uh, on uh, now CD21 to E. Okay. And so we've actually plugged in two things. I've plugged in a GPS course, which is, the, which is taking us through uh, simply to the destination there, Biggin Hill. But also, you'll see here there is some data for us. If I just get in nice and quick, nice and close, see, so 109.35. That's the ILS um, signal that's come out a different navigational source. So sometimes, if you're wanting to land an aircraft, uh, you you may well go in via GPS and then you switch to ILS. All all you need to know is that I'm moving from A to B, and we're really here to look at what the options are on the DMAP page. So let's just switch to that straight away. So the easiest one to start with is this scale button. If you twist this scale button, you get a scale. Obviously, you can see that's changing here. So if you're um, in the sim, you can see I'm going in and out. So I just get an idea of where I am. You can see where the... This button looks very exciting, but it's actually inoperable. It doesn't actually do anything. Yes, 7 here, HTAWS, um, height above terrain uh, overlay. So you click that. And there we are. You can see immediately the red areas uh, are telling me where uh, I need to be careful because there's a peak. Uh, whereas that's off, you don't see that at all. So yeah, that in summary is the um, the digital map. And um, we'll have a look now at the nav aid. So okay, I'm moving here. Just 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 uh, we won't be looking at it, but the vehicle management system. You click on that and you'll get that. Then uh, D map we've been to. Remember, flight navigation display, if you click that, it'll just replicate the screen that you can see on the right uh, with the primary flight display at the top. But if you click Nav D here, you'll get a whole other set of data, uh, which I'm hoping is kind of quite reading uh, to try and figure out what's well, what's not quite there, but in the main, differently of what is in the manual. So we'll have a look at this. So firstly, um, we have got a navigation display here, and we can a FMS plan, okay, which... Uh, we're following so that's a GPS signal that we're following on the flight management aid so that would be your 110.50 would relate and I don't think it does I think I've set this wrong oh didn't want to do that sorry and I think I've set this wrong would relate to the frequency that will allow that will that will automatically allow your pilot um, allow your plane to uh, descend along a glide path so what's interesting me here is that it's 109.35 so i kind of need to change that but you can set two of those uh ILS one and ILS two doesn't particularly matter what it is oh is 109.35 just popped up let me just have a look oh hang on sorry you can't see that i've done it again so so i would switch to that but it gives you different navigation sources and it'll lay them on the screen. So ILS2, when it comes up, will appear um, on on the screen. Okay, but yes, uh, you said that's how you display that. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful. It's there. Okay. Uh, 
you'll notice that we've got waypoint information here. So that's saying my next waypoint information in waypoint. We've got ground speed information here. Notice that we've got uh, 51 is at ground speed here and uh, TAS, which is probably the, the airspeed. The reason that's saying zero at the moment is because I am in active pause. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. No light display. Yeah, you can see I can see itself. It's just from active pause and is following uh, that uh, FMS track going to Wales before we arrive. And you can see it's slowly just tracking down to uh, where we are there. Uh, to, to the aircraft is moving. Um, it's a good idea the aircraft via instruments without looking out the window. Okay, so four gives us the hill shading layer for the map. If I click that, um, you should be able to find, although I think it's just loading. There you go, a hill shading area. And there we go, you can see the map. And then you can see the hill. Okay, again, you can overlay a map on top of uh, your navigation data. Okay, uh, let's uh, just... Um, just be thinking about the range is much the same here. I think I talked about that before. You know, it's the same um, when we were just looking at Digimap. So range does much the same thing. Uh, interesting. There's no difference. Nonetheless, there we go. Not quite, um, on on the display here. We've got the flight management um, system uh, displayed, overlaid, and then direction finder overlaid. Uh, I don't. Think, um, but. Uh, FMS and ILS, uh, you can see that they'll, they'll be aligned by now anyway, because we're flying, we're flying, we're flying in towards the airport. But you're able to overlay these uh, these features here, and you can also see what the this is ILS one, FMS going to EJKB. Uh, you can see it displayed here, and you also got a second um, option here, ILS two, which is the one that we would be um, heading for. So if you want to overlay that, you can see that more clearly. Okay. So you can also, you can, I can overlay if I want, um, FMS and ILS at the same time. And they will be over, I mean, I'd be better if I had an example where, yeah, they were different. But you can overlay um, these two things. You'll pick this up um, really quickly. Eight has my weight and total fuel, how much fuel time I've got left. Really helpful. Nine is you can see that it's displaying the navigation that's on the screen. So FMS, it's saying to EGKB, and ILS2 is 109.35. So it's displaying both of those. You can tell that down there. Ten is waypoint and destination info. Just tells us what I've got programmed in and what is redundant. So if I'd looked at that before, I would have said actually, oh, I've programmed the ILS in for ILS2. Just going to pause this actively right now because we're four minutes away from the runway and 200, there we go. So we'll just pause that there. Just mindful of looking at my altitude, I can just see here that I am at um, where the white line intersects uh, about 12, 1250 feet, okay? Um, so I'm just keeping an eye on that because I would like to just, perhaps if I can demonstrate an, uh, a, a GPS flying, I, I will. Um, I think probably best to leave that to another to another point, but if you're lucky, I might get the courage to do that straight, straight away. Okay, then um, 12 uh, here. This is absolutely crucial, okay? And so if I want to fly via autopilot, as I'm doing at the moment, you need to have the... Uh, these two screens married up or the nav chat the source here married up to the source there okay so if I change this and I um, say that let's have a look I'm going to go on ILS 1 okay um, in order to get them set up well it will be eventually be ILS 2 so we'll move it so I'm clicking my nav source up there on that screen to select the nav source there that we want to follow and I click down here on this and then here's the most here's the crucial thing if you want this to couple well if this <laughs> this is where it gets interesting it hasn't found this signal yet so they're not live so it's it's not giving me the option usually it comes up in purple but when you want to um, marry the two when you marry the two together then that's when it can feed through to the autopilot it won't work with ILS because it hasn't come across the ILS signal yet be interested to see how close we are I'm just gonna have a cheeky look at Navimap should have done but it hasn't um, if I 
uh, uh, but I guess if I put, I wonder if I if I were to take it off active pause, it would probably find it. But anyway, I'm going to select the um, FMS course, and it's come up blue. Can you see? Uh, it comes up blue for FMS, and it comes up purple for ILS signals. And I click in here, I get a blue signal. So I'm matching blue to blue, and then I've got this button saying couple. That's the crucial button. You cl click that, it's going to go green, then it's ready. Uh, and when you select nav in the autopilot, let's just see if we can we can move across to that. Hang on a sec. No, not that one, not that one. Uh, well, actually, that one will do. If we click... Um, if we're on our autopilot and click nav it will follow this course okay so that's that's sort of crucial and i'm holding the airspeed i'm also holding the altitude as well okay so that's a crucial thing you want you want the uh, you need to couple the navigation source in this screen to the navigation source in this screen okay there we go right and 13 let's have a look at that rows or sector view sct so this gives you a different view moving onwards and uh, uh, then we've got uh, 14 I'm looking at button button 14 on the manual what's it say WAXR toggle, toggle weather overlay okay and doesn't seem to make much difference when I try and toggle it but there we go okay and overlay I can move there than it was before okay on DMAP so yeah there's a quick introduction um, we want to get rid of all navigation sources. Uh, there we are. Click on, on data there. So yeah, that's a quick introduction to the both and crucially tying together the navigation source here. Click nav up here to pick your navigation source. Match it to the navigation source there. Um, if it sees both, it will go green. And then you, uh, when you couple it, well, it'll go blue. So hang on, it'll go blue for an FM for an FMS source. Uh, and with ILS, it will uh, change to uh, a different uh, color. It will be purple for ILS. I'm interested to see whether the ILS comes alive. Um, that is the end of the tutorial. If you want to hang about and just see what on earth I'm doing next, uh, feel free. But I'm just going to so I set this up. I'm just going to um, see what happens if I come off active pause and switch the navigation source now. So there we go. We'll come off active pause. See what's happened. We're going to slow right down actually. Our airspeed and I can see here that I'm two minutes away, which is a bit too close for comfort. I think I can see the runway there. I'm looking to slow right down. Um, according to Navi Map, I should be right in the um, right in the in the in the place where. I would usually be expecting to get a, a signal because I'm right in the green. So we'll switch across and see if that works. If it doesn't work, I'll just explore that later. But we'll change the nav source to ILS2. There you go. Can you see that's purple? ILS2. Match the nav source here to ILS2. And this is the bit I actually love. Couple them. Gone to green. And now we are following. I need to give it a bit more room for manoeuvre with a bit of speed. And now we are following our ILS uh, source. Now, 